Hello people, I thought I'd give you a run through on my vegetable oil processing setup. Uh, it's a bit dirty and how you're going at the moment, but I haven't seen a lot of people use this sort of system. Uh, I've been using it for some years now and it's working really well for me. So I thought I'd give you a run through uh, on how I do my veg oil uh, from start to finish. Okay, so the first thing is actually getting your veg oil. Um, I sometimes collect from uh, dumpsters and things, and what I have here is just a uh, scooter motor with a, uh, a Chev oil pump, which I converted, uh, made the ports a lot bigger. They're one inch ports instead of the standard ones. And I just tap it straight into the drum and then have the pickup wand. There is a, uh, a video I did some years ago on this, um, so you can see how it works. It, it pumps through a well. Uh, the way I normally get the oil at the moment, however, is I get it from a, a mob and they uh, put it in an IBC for me, which I pick up in my new trailer that I had to get to take it. And I pump it out with another pump which again is just the Chev oil pump. This is one of my early ones with a, a smaller um, inlet and outlet on it, but still flows pretty well. And that's a, a very old uh, refrigerator motor I got. Um, as you can see, I've taken a couple of hundred liters out of this uh, just now before I thought I'd do this video. Uh, so it makes it much easier than running around and you know picking it up everywhere but unfortunately not many people have that luxury and it's something that I've only just uh, come across myself far and away the best way of um, pre-treating veg oil is to actually do nothing with it put it in a, a drum or an IBC let it sit there three to six months and then when you pump it out all the crap will be at the bottom and you'll have nice clear oil at the top unfortunately um, I've been looking at moving house and I've had to get rid of a lot of stuff so what I do now is just have a 44 gallon drum as you can see it's just got some felt that I've put around the top with a, uh, a tie down type clip it has a uh, valve at the bottom and I simply pump that out when uh, the drum gets full and the oil's no longer going down and then I can either pump it straight into the processor or I've got another plastic barrel here along with a few others which I pump it into uh, just till I'm, I'm ready to process. I know this oil is, is not refined but it does have all the fats and, and big chunks taken out of it um, through being filtered through the felt. You can use any sort of um, material, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I normally do is put it through a couple of times till there gets a bit of fat and crap on the felt because then it filters a whole lot better. From there, uh, I can take it and put it in the processor for drying and fine filtering. So now we get to the processor itself. All I've basically done is I have this um, pump here which has got basically two inlets and two outlets. Um, I've inverted the drum and I actually tapped the fitting into what would normally be the top into the large two inch hole and that's the main oil feed into the pump. I've got a valve on that you can probably just see down the bottom so I can shut the oil off to, if I need to separate the pump for anything and the drum is full. It always pays to have a valve, both ends of whatever you're doing, if there's a, a pressure on either side, so you can do that. Uh, one side, as you see there, is just the return. That goes up through the hose and onto the top here. Uh, I cut a hole there for the two returns. There's a hole there I use for filling an air inlet, and there's a small fan there. That is used to suck the air through the large, the smaller hole, through the drum, and then exhaust it. I found that if I reverse the fan and blow the air in, 
it didn't work nearly as well. The drying took a lot longer. I don't know why that is. Perhaps it's actually push it, pushing moisture into the oil instead of pulling it out. Uh, having it so the fan just sucks the, the air out worked much better. Now, this um, hose here, which was the first one I showed you, that's just the return. It's got a squirter on it, a very narrow nozzle, uh, smaller than this one, and it just basically fires the oil back into the, the pool inside. That creates a bubbling action, which I'll try and uh, get a clip of shortly, and it makes the, um, the, the, the oil bubble as if it was in like a spa or something, and that pulls the moisture out, the, the air pulls the moisture out of the oil and dries it off. The second um, return there comes from the filter which is down here. This is just a normal household 10 inch filter. Um, the, the elements um, I use have been these ones. Uh, I'm not sure what they're called, expanded or something like that. Um, they actually are not the best ones to use. These are the smooth ones. The better ones to use are the ones which are string round. You'll know them when you see them because they just look like a whole heap of string wound on top of one another. Uh, the thing is, the local hardware store doesn't have the string wound ones, so I just get these ones. Uh, they're about four bucks each. I can usually get two um, lots of oil through them which is close enough to 400 litres so you know a dollar a hundred litres I really don't care. Um, I put an also uh, another fitting here which is on the inlet side if I actually want to pump directly out of something like a drum or an IBC I can put a hose on it and suck the oil straight through. There is also a valve here for turning off the flow through the filter and there's another valve here for turning off the other side. The reason I have them is because I don't always want to be filtering straight off. If the oil does have some fats in it and it's cold it will block the filter very quickly. So I usually let the oil circulate a bit um, to get a bit of heat into it which will come from the motor as well as the veg oil burner I put on it. Uh, and then it flows and it, and it won't um, clog up. The other valve is to shut off the other side of the return. That's handy when I'm pumping out the oil, uh, like into drums, because then I can get the full pressure. When I finish the batch, I either pump it into this other drum here, which I know has got all my clean finished oil, or I pump it into a bunch of... Um, 25 litre drums which are what I use to put straight into the car. Uh, for filling the, um, the processor I can either as I say pump it in directly, uh, pump it in with my other pump or I can just fill up a, uh, a container and I can sit it there just like that and the thing will just empty itself while I go and fill up the other one. I heat the uh, oil when I need to with uh, this, which is a, a veg oil burner. There's a whole heap of uh, different ones on my channel, um, and I'm just about to do a cold start video on this one because a lot of people have asked me to see that for some reason. Um, I can get the oil up to, you know, well, basically as hot as I want it, something like 50 or 60 degrees Celsius in, you know, 15 minutes easily. Um, I've got a much bigger blower for the burner than that one um, But I don't worry about it too much. I just you know sit around and watch it and uh, It heats the oil up very quick and then I can just turn the burner off and just let it um, do its thing. I'll try and now see if I can get a um, some some footage of the the action uh, that the processor makes with bubbling the oil Okay, so I've got the, um, the uh, drum full of oil. There's probably about 180 litres or something in it. I do leave a bit of headspace because you'd be surprised how much oil expands when it gets hot. Uh, the fan is, is running, so what I basically do then is simply switch on the pump. This is, um, I'm not sure what size pump it is. I think it's 600 watt. Uh, then I can make sure the bottom uh, inlet is open then I can open 
well that's the filter one I open the the uh, just the circulator one which is the sprayer and I'll just leave the filter one closed for the minute till I uh, get a bit of heat into this oil uh, what happens is there is you might just be able to see it there the oil just comes down in a fine spray and then it bubbles up it's not bubbling very much at the moment because the oil is pretty cold and thick um, it takes a little while it gets a little bit of heat and even just sometimes I think it needs to get a bit of air and then it gets a real good bubbling action going um, as the air comes up the, the bubbles come up it pulls the moisture out and then that wet air is sucked out by the fan and drier air is pulled in uh, yesterday I did a batch and it was it was raining the whole time it took a little longer I probably left it in for about three hours because I actually went off and just did something else and let it run but um, when I came back I hot pan tested it and the oil was just absolutely dry uh, I probably initially had the oil at about I guess 55 60 degrees so it was pretty warm uh, and I think that makes a big difference in getting rid of all the moisture having the oil above ambient temperature as you can see there there's a bit of foaming going on I'm not really sure what that was I used to think it was because of the water content but the oil I had yesterday was doing the same thing when I'd finished it and I, I double checked it this morning and it was dead dry it could be something they've they've put in the oil I don't know uh, the oil is is really good it came out really clear and you know just just good stuff overall I'll um, I'll heat the oil up and come back and show you how the bubbling action works okay I've had the burner going about five minutes the oil temperature in the tank has gone from about 12 to I guess around about 35 40 and you can see now how the bubbling action of the oil is working much more vigorously um, all that's happening is that there is a small uh, fitting like the one on the top there near the pipe uh, which is quarter inch uh, which is just making the oil a little bit pressurized from the pump and squirting it directly back into the rest of the oil this is like just squirting a hose into a swimming pool you get a lot of bubbling effect the bubbles uh, it's the air that brings the um, the moisture out of the oil just like some people use uh, fish tank pumps or the like except obviously this just pumps a whole lot more air through and you um, get a much quicker drying action as well as being able to filter the oil off the pump at the same time so that's pretty much about it now I can open up the uh, filter side of it I'll just try that you might see the bubbling action drops off a little bit uh, because the oil uh, is not going in at quite the same pressure but the flow is there and you know if I can you know go and I can leave this for an hour now or a couple of hours uh, I'll get all the oil filtered uh, down to that five micron that I use if I can find one micron filters I get them but five is fine and then all I do is disconnect that hose on the top there closest to me I pull that off and then I um, pump back through the filter into the tanks or the drum that I want for the finished oil so that's my oil processing setup uh, I hope that helps people that are looking to do it uh, if you like the video uh, click the like that's supposed to help and um, any questions let me know just one thing I don't have plans for anything I make all this up as I go out of my head it's it's dead simple if I can do it anybody can figure it out once they've seen it so you know if you need plans well they're probably not going to be much good because you wouldn't figure out uh, what you were doing anyway um, just go with it, you'll soon get the idea, and um, good luck with it. Thanks for watching.